what speed to the city streets we begin to feel the fire we rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher the night's young and it's just begun as she puts her hand in mine everyone I am glad that I am here today I am going to be working on a baby quilt and I'm going to literally start from the very beginning I'm not going to you know jump around or anything like that so if you are just joining feel free to jump in the chat say hello let me know you're here I am going to get started on my cutting first so we will be spending some time doing that first and foremost, but I do want to thank everybody for supporting my channel. I was live earlier today with Sean, the guy who sews. It was a great time. I had a blast and we have jumped up from 94 subscribers all the way to 122 before I started this live today. So I want to thank you to all of my new subscribers. I really do appreciate you being here and spending the time with me, so thank you. So I'm going to swap my camera back over real quick. Uh, we are going to get going with the cutting table. I've got a lot of cutting to do, and this is a pattern that I did come up with myself. It is not a published pattern, uh, so there is not something for me to send you to go buy or anything like that. All of the measurements will be available here on once I get done with the pattern. So this is, I am going to do something inspired by an Irish chain. It's not going to be a proper Irish chain, but it is going to be inspired by it. So this fabric right here is going to be my center fabric. It's very bright, very cheerful. Then I have this blue to transition into. And this is a batik. I only have a half yard of this blue. Uh, so we are working within the constraints of Everything has to fit within that half yard. I do have this fabric. This is one of the fabrics that the baby's mother picked out. The baby is due in May. Um, so we also picked out, I picked out this batik as well. And it's not an exact match to any of the blue in here, but it is really close to this leaf fabric right there. Then the baby's mother also picked out two other fabrics that I will be using. And this is one of them. This is a fabric that she picked out from Hobby Lobby. Uh, she went to her local store and I went to my local store. That way we could easily, across the country, go ahead and tell you know what colors she liked and what colors worked well for her. This fabric right here has a lot of peach colors, a lot of pink tones in it. And it's not an exact match to anything else that she picked out. However, it does go well with these fabrics. Uh, she also picked out 
This fabric right here, it is a very small print compared to some of the others she picked out. So as comparison, that is a very large print. And here's a large print as well. So this is a very small print. I do also have a couple of other prints hanging out with me today. This boutique right here, I do have this also in a half yard cut. So if I do use this, it is going to be only up to that half yard. And it is kind of a mottled color. So there is some dark tones as well as the regular cream. And it does have a leaf pattern on it. And then we also have this pattern right here, and I just love this boutique. This one actually kind of looks like sunflowers. So there's, you know, overlapping sunflowers all throughout this pattern, but it is all in the creams and tans. And then I do have this fabric right here. It is a peach color, so it's not exactly the, um, the coral colors that the baby's mother picked out. However, it's really, really close. So unless we are putting it right next to one of those other fabrics, you may not even notice that it isn't the exact same shade. This is going to be some border fabric, so I will be putting that in as well. So I see I've got a couple of viewers. If you are viewing and you are not able to comment, it is because you are not a subscriber. Uh, so please make sure you hit subscribe down below and also hit the like if you are liking the content. But once you are subscribed, it does take five minutes, I believe, before you can, yep, five minutes before you can comment. And I would love to have you in the chat and commenting today. So the pattern that I'm going to do, I am going to use seven fabrics. So I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I'm actually not going to use these creams. I, I thought about it. Uh, using the creams versus the, well, actually, you know what? I think I am going to use it. I'm going to discard that fabric. So I am going to use the sunflower print versus the leaves. So that way I have a more consistent color. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for this pattern, you do want to choose some kind of order that you want to go in whether it's from a more patterned to a less patterned, a darker to a lighter, or whether you're going through a color gradient, you do want to choose fabrics that will go along that. I see quilting in the man cave, lovely fabrics. Those will make a gorgeous baby quilt. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. She, um, she chose coral, dusty blue, and cream as her colors. So I went to the store and picked out what I thought were coral, dusty blue, and cream. And I came home with this batik right here, which is a kind of a bright blue. It's not exactly the dusty blue, but that was the closest I could find. And I did have a couple of other batiks, but I don't know what's happened to them since then. Uh, so, but all of these fabrics are pre-washed now. Uh, this fabric I picked up at a flea market, uh, and it is a brand new batik. So it has not been used before. I did starch things, so there will be a little bit of starch hanging around. Hi, it's Kennedy. Glad you are here. Thank you. And then this is one of those fabrics that my um, that that baby's mother picked out, and as you can see, she did pick out that coral color. And this is an off white. It's not quite a cream, uh, but she also has it. Also has a lot of greens in it. And one of the fabrics she picked out also had a lot of green in it. So we're, we're just going to work with what we've got now. This fabric, I do have two yards of it, so I've got quite a bit, so I'll be pulling some of it out of the way. So I'm not cutting all of my fabric up for this. And then we are going to be, again, using the Sunflower Batik print. So I'm super excited. So I'm gonna raise my chair up just a hair. That way I can actually see what I'm cutting. So I am going to pull some of these aside and just push them out of the way. That way they are not right up underneath my ruler. So what I'm going to try doing today is I am actually going to cut from the opposite end. And I just picked up a ruler from uh, So Be It Quilts. 
This is one of their slide lock rulers. It is a quilter slide lock. It is the 14 inch one. And so if you notice, it does not have any measurements on it. So what I what it is for is once you measure where you're going to cut, you press down and this is not going anywhere. I can't pull this fabric out if I wanted to, as long as I'm putting just enough pressure on that to get the little bumpers to stay. So I am going to measure using my other ruler. Um, so that is how we are going to do that today. So I am going to line this up real quick. And so what we are going to do is we are going to cut one and three quarters inch strips. And these are going to come out, let me get my embroidery cutter and drop a bottle. Hang on just a second, you guys. I don't want distractions from the puppy. He loves empty bottles. Where is my coworker? He is down underneath the table. He is hanging out. He is snoozing away today, which is fine. He woke me up at 4.15 this morning, wanting to go out. He was thoroughly convinced that it was time. And 4.15 is far too early than my schedule. All right, so I'm gonna use that just to measure where I want to be so I have a straight line. You know what, I'm just going to line this up a little bit differently. I'll use the lines on my mat. I think that's going to be easier for me today. I am a little drowsy, so I am operating a sharp object while drowsy. So it's not what I recommend, but, you know, here we are. Can't always get the amount of sleep we want. Can't always get the amount of sleep we need, right? So... My wonderful husband is actually off going to teach today, so he is out of the house for the day. And amazingly enough, he was willing to help press fabric last night. So some of this is pressed thanks to my husband. I didn't have to put in as much effort as I normally would, and I cannot thank him enough for that. <laughs> All right, so here is my first cut. For the fabric that we're going to keep and so this is a one and three quarters inch strip and this is what we're going to to be cutting hi chloe i see i can't stay but i want to say hi i appreciate that thank you very very much and i don't know who all managed to catch this morning where i was over with sean at the guy who sews that was my early morning wake-up call this morning he, is, he goes live on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern, which is his time zone. However, that is 6 a.m. my time. I'm in mountain time zone. So that is a huge adjustment for me. So we are going to cut, we're going to get started with, I want to say, let's cut five strips of each. And we're just going to get started with that so you guys can see what we're going to be doing. And I cannot math today, so <laughs> you will see me using a lot of different tools today that are just to keep me straight because math is not working. And it is not anything to do with my ability to math. It is just my ability to math with my current state of exhaustion. <laughs> so I watched a little. I'm working on another bear. That is awesome. So for those who, of you who do not know, it's Kennedy is working on some memory bears and they are coming out gorgeous. And it's always a big task when you're working with non-cotton fabrics or non-standard quilting cotton fabrics. So anything that you make that is not standard or not your normal, that is a challenge for anyone and she is doing a fantastic job. I am so proud to be able to get to watch that come together. All right, so I've got four strips. I am going to go ahead and cut one more. And what uh, five strips will get you at least one block. So that is what we are going to start with today, is we are going to start with just making sure that we can get one block done, and we will come back and cut more later. So to keep this steady, I am just going to fold over just a hair and I am not going to smooth anything out. I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going 
to pick it up and slide it out of my way. All right, so we've got five of this fabric. I'm hoping that that helps with the viewing because it is definitely a very busy print. So let's go grab the next one. And I hope with having two cameras going, that makes it a little bit easier for everybody to tell kind of what I'm doing. I could not get the camera set this morning to go ahead and do full screen on the, uh, on the cutting table. Again, I, I cannot math today, so I cannot, there's a lot of things that my brain is not cooperating with me on. So we are just doing what we can. And I will be finishing this project tomorrow if I do not get it done today. So there will be, honestly, a lot more to go tomorrow as well. And this is not going to be a di particularly difficult pattern to do. It is, I will have all the instructions written out and, and have a download for you guys. But when I get it done, I just could not get it done. I, uh, I do have some medical conditions, and I am waiting for my next dose of medication, which comes Tuesday. Uh, so after my medication dose hits, I will be feeling a lot more like myself, and it will be a little bit easier to keep up. So I am just doing what I can while I can, and I will be happy with it. I'm just glad to be able to touch fabric and sew and quilt and all of that. Quilting in the man cave, you did well with Sean this morning. It was a pleasure meeting you and getting to know you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And you're going to have to remind me your name because I do not, it is, it is slipping my memory. Because I know, I saw you in the chat. I just cannot remember names to save my life this morning. It is all part of that, uh, struggle today. <laughs> I do tend to learn who my subscribers are and who's regularly in the chat and I do try to learn everybody's names if their their YouTube handle does not match a name. So I do try to do that. And I do also have, if you want, I do have a Facebook group as well. Uh, just do exclamation FB for Facebook and put that in the chat and Nightbot will give you the link to the Facebook group. It is a closed or private group. So whatever you post there will not show to the public. Um, so you can share, you know, super secret projects you're working on. You can share gifts. You don't, there are no limitations as long as it is quilting related. It is welcome in the group. And I actually have a super secret project that I'm working on. And uh, I can't talk about it because the people that it's for would find me out. So I would be stuck if, if, I, if I spill the beans. All right, so we've got two fabrics cut. And we are just, again, we are just cutting five strips right now. We're going to see how far our five strips go. And we are going to keep these in order. And I will show you why we're going to keep them in order just a little bit if you don't keep them in order you can put them back in order after the fact because we are going to rearrange them a little bit here in a minute once we get everything ready but it's not going to be it's going to be important later on to keep everything in order uh, whatever order you want it to be now if you change the order and you are fine leaving it the way that you changed it then you're good to go if not and you you have to have it the way you originally said, then you will have a date with your seam ripper. Mine is named Jackie. And I also showed Sean before we went live this morning, and I need to probably show you guys. I have another seam ripper, and his name is Liam. You are Rob. Awesome, Rob. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love having guy quilters on the channel. Um, you guys do you think differently and you frequently think outside of the box and I really do love seeing what everybody comes up with 
And I definitely came from an area where guy cultures was not a thing. So it is still kind of novel to me in a little bit of respects. I am a huge follower of Ricky Tims. I have, well, I'll say I used to be a huge follower. I just have not had energy to follow lately. Um, so my carry machine that I carry with me, that machine is named Ricky. I named it Ricky because it is a Bernina 350 patchwork edition, so a smaller machine than my normal machine. And it is, it has a Ricky Timms faceplate. So was, the faceplate was designed by Ricky Timms in all his traditional, um, oh gosh, feather kind of design with all the little colors. And I carried it to Paducah with me and he autographed it. So I am super excited to have, have my Ricky Timms edition. So I have Reiki, and then the machine you guys will normally see me sew on is Beauty. And I do have another machine, and it is the Beast. And that is my sit-down long arm. You guys probably will not see me actually sew on the Beast, just because it is so incredibly loud. So, it does an amazing job. It's just really, really loud. So what are you, what is everyone working on today? I know, I've been, I had to spend a lot of time ripping seams over the last couple of days. I had a oops moment with one of my quilts, and I sewed all of my flying geese the wrong direction. So I had to pull out the flying geese and put them back in the correct direction. I got that done this morning on Sean's channel, and I... I'm also working on my prismatic star, and I have gone through having to take everything apart on that prismatic star, and so it is all finally ripped, so we'll be able to get started back on it <laughs> probably within a couple of days from now. I'm thinking maybe by Wednesday I will be back to my normal and be able to get going with and I am trying to make sure that this does stay on camera. So if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing, please do not hesitate to ask. I am an open book. And I know I'm, I struggle with math today, but I can kind of answer my questions about what I'm doing. Um, and this quilt will be two blocks wide by three blocks down. So there will be six blocks in this quilt. And they are going to, the blocks themselves are going to measure 16 and a quarter. So they are going to come out to be fairly large blocks. So cutting these really small, they, they'll come out to be a one and a quarter inches. So we're cutting one and three quarters. And then when you get that seam allowance in there, that takes out another half inch. So that is what we are doing. And if you've not seen these slide lock rulers before, if you have problems with arthritis and problems holding things or gripping a ruler or putting your hand flat, this really is making a huge difference. Uh, the only thing I think I would adjust if I have Matt and Fallon make me a custom one is I would put more ruler on the side because of the way that I like to hold my hold my ruler. But it works wonderfully. I you know, even holding it the way that it was designed, you know, either way, it, it works gorgeous. So all I'm having to do is put a little bit of pressure on the handle, and that the ruler is not going anywhere. So I think this was the best investment I could have made. And right now, Fallon's channel. Their, their store over at Soviet Quilts, they do have a, a, a promotion going on right now. They are doing a celebration to celebrate their first year of having the store, and they are giving away a Juki sewing machine. Uh, you can find out all the details over on their channel. You can enter by making a purchase, and there's another way to enter 
but they've got all those details over at their store website. But I did go ahead and buy my ruler that I've been wanting in order to enter the drawing. <laughs> it is a little self-serving in that respect. I did buy it for that, but that's okay. I also wanted it. I, it was on my wish list. So what better time to buy on your wish list and get things that you've wanted than when you are going to possibly also get rewarded for it as well. So that was just extra incentive to go ahead and bite the bullet and make that purchase. So I actually also had to buy a new phone lately. Uh, I have cracked my phone screen. Let's see. Yes. Uh, everybody saying hi to each other. I'm glad you all are here. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. So I know it's Kennedy is working on the bears today that she has been working on for a while. She'd be getting a lot done. I may have to learn how you put that uh, emoji in there, Rob. I'm attaching a binding on a gift quilt. Awesome. That is actually... You know, that reminds me. I needed to make a note. Perfect timing. I am going to be doing my binding tutorial coming up. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do it on Tuesday Nights Live or if I'm going to do it as a separate pre-recorded tutorial. Kind of like my Flying Geese tutorial, but I think I'll have a little bit better <laughs> grip on how I feel about recording things by then. My Flying Geese tutorial was the first video I posted, and it is a pre-recorded video, and I went through and edited and did all this other stuff. And what a lot of people will take out of their videos is uh, when you stop and have to redo something or fix something. Did I do that? No, I did not. I left it in there, and I put some funny captions over what I was saying so you couldn't hear all the stuff I was screwing up. <laughs> like if you were listening, you could hear it. But if you were reading the screen, you would see it. You would see what I changed all the captions to say. <laughs> it was something like, we'll be back to the regularly scheduled programming once I figure out what the heck I did wrong. <laughs> something along those lines. It is always good to be able to laugh at yourself and enjoy what you're working on. I am about ready for a new blade in this rotary cutter. I should have changed that, but of course, I had too much else going on. My husband just, he needed a lot of help going into this first presentation. I am so proud of him. He is doing an amazing job with one of his hobbies, and he's been asked to give presentations, so he is doing that. And he is a very thorough person, so he wants to have everything lined up. And I could not be more proud of him. Let's see. I am singing. She's got legs. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, you know, I need to get you over here. It's Kennedy, so you can start singing to my, my, uh, my subscribers. I cannot sing to save my life. But, oh, that would be so much fun. <laughs> so I am I am not somebody who can sing. I can, if I were to sing, it needs to be in the car when nobody else is there because I cannot carry a tune. I used to as a child and then I grew up and lost it. <laughs> I did not ma manage to maintain my, my ability to not be tone deaf. So I do not sing when anybody else can hear because I don't want to hurt anybody else's eardrums. That, I cannot do it. Yeah, it's Kennedy. She can carry a tune. I'll tell you guys. She can carry a tune. I need to get, over, get her over here and get her mic'd up so she can, she can carry us through. <laughs> I can just imagine you singing that. Oh, is that the one from the commercial for the, from when we were kids, where it was those pantyhose commercials? Or is that, is that a different She's Got Legs song? 
Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to mentally picture that song. <laughs> oh, I think the only song that gets stuck in my head when somebody says words is that Green Acres song. And if you're too young to know what Green Acres is or the Green Acres song, uh, it was Zsa Zsa Gabor was on as a as the wife, the very ditzy wife of a farmer. And she was very opulent, always wanting to wear her pearls or diamonds or what have you. But she married this gentleman because he was a, he's a good, got a good heart. Uh, ZZ Top. I can't sing either, but I can entertain myself. Yes, yes, you do that very, very well. <laughs> um, but Zsa Zsa Gabor uh, was the ditzy, ditzy wife. Very not country country living smart but her husband in the show was not very city life smart i mean he was a smart man or he was portrayed as a smart man but he was not portrayed as city smart and it was just very it was it was very much a comedy show and it came on right around the same time at least on TV Land, I think, is who played it when I was growing up. I think it came on about the same time. There's one other show, and it was like some railway station or something. And I don't remember all the details, or maybe that's the same show, and I'm just trying to separate them into two. I don't know. But, yeah, there is that song. Somebody can just say the words Green Acres, and that's where my mind goes, and it starts to that song. That is the only one I got like that though. None of the others that are like key words or something bring back that kind of of uh, mental imagery for me. All right, we are to our last one. And this fabric is uh, another boutique that I only bought a half a yard of. I do know where I bought this. <coughs> I'm sorry. I do know where I bought this. So I could potentially go get some more. Unfortunately, they are, it is on sale today, and today is the last day of the sale. Maybe I can get them some to be sweet if I have to go on Monday to go get more. <laughs> and see if they will offer me the same discount they're having today. I, am, I wish I had gotten some more, but I really have not had a chance to go anywhere or do anything lately. I have been running through meetings and running through different different things I've just had to take care of. So I have not had fabric shopping time. I need some fabric shopping time, you guys. Not that I really need a whole lot more fabric, but I need some fabric shopping time. Rob says, I sing solo. Solo, you cannot hear me. Even my dogs go into hiding if I try to. <laughs> uh, so... My my profile name, the, Sci the Siberian Wind, it started out because I got a Siberian Husky. And that was where the Siberian part of my name came from. And that dog, let me tell you, you get anyone in the house singing, and that dog would go to howling. It was as bad as a beagle. He, you know, beagles tend to be very loud and very singy. They howl a lot. But that husky, oh, you got to singing and that dog would howl. I love that dog. Oh, I miss him. Oh, I miss him. <laughs> that is funny, though. I had a cat growing up, and I played piano when I was growing up. I really wanted to be a world-class pianist or something. I definitely did not have the commitment to it that I should have had if I wanted to actually achieve that goal. But I would play the piano, and the cat would come over, lay on the piano, and meow when I hit certain notes on the keyboard. Like, we actually had an upright piano. My brother wanted to play, and I wanted to learn to play because he played. You know, it was 
is that whole little sister thing. So you go one, two, three, four. Okay, one more stroke. And then we can start laying this out how we're going to work it. So, yeah, it's it's been a challenge. And I, I really enjoyed it, though. I really did. All right. And actually, we should be able to get two blocks out of this, now that I'm thinking. So we're going to see how my caffeine kicks in, okay? All right, so you guys, I've got the different, I've got seven different prints or seven different fabrics. You can do this in solids. This would look gorgeous in like a gradation of colors in solids. You could definitely do that with it. That's not what I'm going to do because it's not what, not what got picked out. And the baby's mother does not have any idea what pattern I'm going with. Uh, she simply just knows that the baby is getting its own quilt. Uh, her older daughter uh, also got her own quilt. So, of course, when I messaged her about, hey, you know, you're expecting again, do you, do you want a quilt for the little one? And she's like, oh, absolutely, yes, please. So she has no idea what the pattern's going to be, which is fine. It allows me to play around with it and adjust it if I need to. That is my favorite love of baby quilts, is you get to play around and adjust it. All right, so those are my seven fabrics, okay? And there are five strips of each, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Our base run, our base line, because this is an Irish chain, is going to be the laying, laying the strips out like this over so my fold is up there it's just easier to grab let me set these off to the side a little bit more because I'll need the room okay we are going to do that and I'll look in just a second and make sure all this is on camera so if it's not don't panic I will make sure it is here in just a second Okay, it is almost just on camera. All right, so we're going to move off just a hair. And my fold, fabric is folded into quarters. So this is an entire width of fabric strip. So these are all 40, 42, something like that. They're all fairly long strips. Okay, when you are doing an Irish chain quilt, you do always want to have an odd number of strips. You don't want to do an even number because an even number is not going to make sense. All right, so now that I'm looking at it, I am kind of wondering if I need those because I'm wondering if they stand out too much. And I might actually take both blues out because that would make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that's what I'm going to do, you guys. So I'll cut this blue and I will not end up because I think we're, we're just going to adjust it. So we may adjust the number of blocks also. So, and this is another reason to lay these out like this once you have everything cut, because this is actually how they're going to be sewn together. So this fabric doesn't make as much sense without the blues. However, we do need it because it does tie everything in. So this is gonna be a lot more plain of a quilt out those two blues but it will still work so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine strips and that also means we are just using five fabrics okay so one two three four and five okay so this is your middle strip set you are going to make six of these if we're only doing six blocks but that's okay. We'll go ahead and sew them together. And then all we have to do if we don't need it all is we will take and we will rip. Okay. So that is one strip set. We are going to sew all of those together here in just a minute. So our next strip set is going to be, let's see, let me go pull these out. So 
we're going to have strips on either side that are coming out from there. Now, because that is our piece in the middle, it, our piece on the side is going to go in the middle. Okay? It is also going to go on either side. And this is why we, we cut five strips, so you have enough to get started. So the next fabric here is this pastel with, or the creamy color with the bigger flowers. So that's going to go on either side. And then the last is going to be this pink colored fabric. So I don't know how well you can see this from the distance, you know, down to the table. But here is our center strip. And then there is our next strip. So we could do a couple of different things, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to piece these two. We are going to come back to the table and we are going to cut, we will go ahead and cut enough for, you know what, let me grab my phone, hang on, let me do some math. We are going to math. All right, let's see, let's see. All right, so these are gonna be one and a different quarter. And we are doing nine, so that's going to make an 11 and a quarter inch block, which means two of those blocks is only going to be a 22 and a half inch quilt. So we are going to do three across. And let's see, times four makes it 45. So yeah, we are going to do 12 blocks total. So we are going to need 12 of these. And we're going to need 24 of these once we cut these apart. But we are cutting them at one and a quarter inches or one and three quarters inches. So let me pull these strips back down out of the way. And I will keep them in order. I'm going to stack them up. That way I can just lay them back out when we come back over here. So. I will come take a look at the chat here in just a second, see if I missed anything. All right. So this is my next my next strip set, but I'm going to set it off to the side for the moment. So we've got two, four, six, and eight, and then we've got an extra strip. Okay. So I'm going to sew these two strips together, these two strips together, these two. And these two and now we'll come back and sew those two together those two together those two together and that to that so I will get it all sewn together but I am going to sew it together in strip sets and I am not going to worry so much about which direction that I sew from solely because as long as I am sewing the correct side which is going to be this side as long as I sew the correct side, I have dual feed on my machine. If you do not have dual feed, you could always put your walking foot on and use a quarter inch seam with your walking foot and achieve the same thing. All right, so we are going to put these together and it is going to be this seam, this side right here. So I'm going to line up those selvages. Now you can go ahead and cut selvages off if you want. I am not actually that concerned with it. I believe we will come out just fine without worrying about it. And what I could do, and what I think I actually will do, is instead of making this a strip set, I'm going to set that aside, since that is our center, and we'll sew these two as well. That way I'm sewing all four of the same kinds of fabric together and we're not going back and forth. Now you can make these any size that you want. So this will be a completely customizable option. So you do not have to stick with having seven strips or stick with having five or whatever size that I am using. You can upsize this quilt um, and I will show you how to do that. So it's not going to be locked in to the size that's why I'm showing you how to, how to do it without 
doing all of that. Now I am sticking with the same size throughout the quilt, so everything is going to be cut one and three quarters. You could make this a much larger quilt by using jelly rolls, but I do need this to be a small quilt because it is a baby quilt. All right, so I'm going to swap over, and so you guys will actually see my cam my machine as well as me. And let me make one real quick change. So you guys aren't looking at the top of my head up against the top of the ah, top of <laughs> the window. All right. So my machine is down here. I am not going to turn my light off today. I know I usually turn my light off so everybody can see a little bit better. I am not doing that today because I need the light. Um, so I do have all of these strip sets lined up. So if you see down at the machine, I have all of my different pairs just sitting here. Now we are not going to worry as much about doing as much pressing today as I might normally if I was just doing this just to do this. Like if I was just working on this normally, I would probably press between each step. I'm not going to be doing that today. I am going to be working more on just finishing getting a lot done so when you sew long strips if you do not already know if you use a walking foot that will feed both top and bottom layer together uh, so you, know, you do have that option as well if my machine is too loud you guys please let me know I would like to see if I can adjust it or make changes for tomorrow if it is too loud um, so please in the comments let me know if you are able to hear me over the machine or if you're not because I want you to be able to hear and to be able to participate so we are just going to get all of these strips of sound and the nice thing with an Irish chain is if I don't need all of this fabric. If I don't need all of these strip sets, I can rip just the small seam and then be able to move everything over. So you're not stuck with, you know, what, what you've got going on. All right, so how early did everybody get up? How long have you been awake by this point? I have been awake for six and a half hours at this point. That is a lot earlier than I am ever accustomed to being awake. And now on Sean's Live this morning, we got to talking about bugs. We got to talking about a lot of different topics and different YouTube channels and what kind of content we watch when we are not watching quilting content. Now, I will also say this. So I have two fabrics here. I have my fabric with the blue, the flowers with the blue, and then I have my pastel, flower, pastel flowers. If you get to your machine and you cannot remember which side you are sewing together, it doesn't matter. Because as long as you are sewing just a pair, it does not matter. When you get to sewing the pairs to each other, that's when it will start mattering. So I am not exactly, not actually concerned. And we will do some pressing today, just not, not an extensive amount. Uh, we are going to do finger pressing most of the day because everything is going to be cut the same measurements. So it's not going to be, there's not going to be a lot of difference to go into it all. And in case anybody does ask, I do always pre-wash all of my fabrics. I don't always pull the lint out. <laughs> my husband, again, helped me press. Uh, thank goodness for him. He got some of that done last night for me. But I don't always pull all the little lint fuzzies off of my fabrics because I will be washing them again once everything is quilted. I always pre-wash all of my quilts before they are gifted. 
I would rather have a problem with a bleeding fabric or a seam that did not hold or anything. I would rather have that happen to me than to happen to the recipient. So, and this quilt will be getting shipped across the country. So once it is done, if it is not pre-washed, then I will be shipping it across the country with no hopes of probably ever seeing it again to fix it if there's a problem. So, it will be what it will be. All right, and when you do the math on one and a quarter, so let's say we're just going to cut, count it as two inches. If I were to cut all of these two inches instead of the one and three quarters, I would get 20 cuts out of each of these strip sets, which we do not need that many. So there will be extra here. So I may not have to do as much extra cutting, but we will see. We will see, we will see. The only fabric in this set that I am using that is a half yard cut is the batik, the sunflower batik. So that's the only one that I am worried about having enough fabric to complete the quilt. But I think we will be fine since we've eliminated the blue from the quilt. So have any of you in the chat ever done a Irish chain quilt before. If you are watching on replay, feel free to drop it in the comments. Let me know, have you ever done an Irish chain before? Uh, this is going to be a variation, so it's not going to be a straight Irish chain or traditional Irish chain, uh, but it is going to fairly, it, it's going to look like an Irish chain to the, you yeah, know, for the most part. It's not going to be wonky or curvy or anything like that. It's not going to be funky. But it is going to be, it's inspired by an Irish chain. That's what we should call it, is inspired. So, this was not at all what I originally planned I was going to do for this quilt. However, what I planned wasn't going to work very well. So, here we are. We changed it. So, I'm definitely going to have to check out your channel, Rob. I'm excited. I didn't have time to check out much of anything anywhere. <laughs> After I left Sean's live, I was immediately pressing fabric because my husband pressed only half of what I have and I needed the rest done. And he did not press with starch, and I usually do. So the ones that I knew for sure I was going to be using, I needed to add a little bit of starch to. So, let's see. So I do have a couple of other quilts that will be coming up. Um, I will be getting back to the Prismatic Star and working on it this week. I will be putting new sashing in place. I did get the other sashing washed. I just need to get it pressed and then cut. So I am actually to the point of being ready to start reassembling. And I will have one quilt top mostly done. And the Elizabeth Hartman is coming along nicely. I just need to decide exactly how I'm altering the pattern. The Elizabeth Hartman pattern that I'm working on is Star Systems, and it is an 80 inch by 80 inch quilt, and I want a larger quilt than that. This is going to go on my bed, and we like a king size quilt on our queen size bed. So, gotta upsize, gotta upsize. Alright, so I've got my strip sets. And again, I am not concerned if I faced them the right direction going through this time because I can face them the right direction now. And again, I'm not going to worry about pressing just yet. I could, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so this is my outside strip set. It is the 
sunflower batik and the pink pinky colored fabric it's a floral pattern but it's not exactly like something that's easy to follow all right so that pattern is going next to the pink fabric pattern is going next to this um, cream with the green and such it is going next to that one not next to the blue the blue is going next to the center so it makes it super simple all we need to do is put these two together and feed them through and then we will do the same with the other two strip sets that we've got and I am kind of lining up the top for the selvages but I'm not super concerned like I will have plenty of room to cut off what I need to cut off. So we are going to put that in. And I do know that I did have one lady message me or put a comment on one of my videos and that was super sweet the other day. And so I just wanted to say once again, thank you for letting me know that my content is not boring. I know, especially when we do these lives, there's a lot of other people that are also going live, especially on Saturdays and Sundays. So we may not always get the content or may not always get the crowds that we're accustomed to. But I am very, very thankful that somebody let me know that they were not finding my content at all boring. So I do appreciate that. I do tend to ramble. I know... I was watching Donnell earlier and she was talking about birds and dogs and sergers as well as a lot of other topics. She had a special guest this morning. And I think it was Guy's Craft 2. Uh, his name's John, I believe. She had him on her channel this morning. And of course, I was on Sean's channel and I got an quite a few new subscribers so I want to say thank you if you are a new subscriber I really do appreciate it if I repeat if I repeat myself it is due to me being tired <laughs> it is definitely due to me being tired so let's see let's see okay this will be one strip set, and I've got the other one still sitting in my lap. If you are here live or you are watching the replay, put a comment down below and tell me, do you wear shoes when you sew? Or do you wear socks when you sew? Do you sew barefoot, or how do you sew? How do you use your foot pedal? I know that is always a hot topic. I actually, in my home, I frequently wear Crocs or Croc style shoes. I'll put it that way. They are not name brand. I do not spend money on name brand if I don't have to. <laughs> but you do. Uh, I do wear Crocs throughout the house or Croc style shoes, and so they are easy slip on, slip off. So I definitely slip my shoes off when I sew. Rob says, please do check it out when you can. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will be happy to check out your channel. It has been fun kind of getting to know everybody and all these other content creators. There's a lot that I just never, like YouTube never said, hey, you might enjoy this person's content. Like YouTube just was not showing me that. So I am definitely seeing a lot more people in the comments going, hey, by the way, I've got a channel than what YouTube was showing me. Hi, Dragonflies for Donna. Hi, hello. Welcome to the chat. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Today, we are working on a baby quilt, and I do have my microphone right next to my machine, so if my machine is too loud, please put something in the comments, because I cannot tell if you guys can hear me over my machine, so I do need to know if you guys can hear me when I am sewing. Um, I am 
I have been tasked with creating a baby quilt for a little one due in May. And this will be shipped across the country. And the baby's mother did pick out some fabrics at Hobby Lobby local to her. So I went to my local Hobby Lobby, picked up samples, and I am using two of the fabrics that she picked out. And the rest are fabrics that I picked out that do not, that were not from Hobby Lobby. Uh, one couple of them, one of them was from a flea market pickup. Same project I was working earlier on Sean's channel. No, this is not. The project I was working on on Sean's channel is the Elizabeth Hartman pattern that I've been working on, I think, since February, beginning of February. I am working on Star Systems by Elizabeth Hartman. And that one I put off to the side. This is a completely new project. I just needed to get this done. And so we are doing, this is what I have come up with. It's my own pattern, uh, or I'm not following anybody's pattern. But this is something that I have not shown you guys on my channel before. I do frequently come up with my own quilts. Like I don't, I'm doing a prismatic star pattern that is a quilt works pattern. And I am doing the Elizabeth Hartman pattern. Uh, the star systems pattern. So I am doing those pur purchased patterns. However, a good majority of my quilts are not purchased patterns. They are something that I come up with, whether I use electric quilt software to help me design it, or whether I just come up with it out of my head. So I do that frequently, and I just really haven't gotten a chance to show everyone on my channel. So this is a new project. So, I am doing an Irish chain inspired baby quilt. The mother picked out some fabrics. She picked out the this cor coral right here, as well as this one with the blue on it. I have picked out some other fabrics, and this is my center strip. We are doing the center center row for the quilt. And no, I have not taken it to press it, and I'm not going to. Uh, I will do that once I am ready with this entire strip set. We will take it and we will press it. But what I may do is I may go ahead and do the next one. I don't know. You know what? Let me open. Let me, let me wake up my iron. I will go ahead and press this one before I go to the next one. So... I know Rob has said that he is working on his binding. Donna, what all are you working on today? It's Kennedy is working on some memory bears. And then obviously I'm working on a baby quilt. <laughs> I would love to hear what you are working on. I will be live for probably a couple of hours. I'm not sure if I'm going to go full to three today. But I will be back tomorrow. Always barefoot. Awesome. I have I have sewn in socks. I will say that. But not normally. Mine is, is almost exclusively barefoot. Laura, just popping in to say hello. I'm getting my hair cut, so I have a little bit of time to listen in. Awesome. That is very nice. I really need to go get my hair cut. It is looking a little uneven on the ends. So I think it is time for at least a trim, if not an actual cut. Andrea, hi. She says, howdy, coming over from Leanna's. Trying to give support to everyone today as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Donna says, I'm working on baby shower gifts. Also, I'm barefoot or socks, never shoes. Yeah, I don't know how... I don't know how people can sew in shoes. I just don't feel like I have enough enough control over that foot pedal when I am wearing shoes. Hi, Tessa. Hello, I'm going to get back to cutting and sewing while I listen and watch. That sounds like a plan. I have been, I was listening to Donnell while I was getting things pressed and trying to get things ready. I actually had to turn her off so I could do a little bit of math. 
and I still didn't do all my math right. So we are going to just work with it. So what the quest, what the going question is for those just joining is do you sew barefoot or do you sew with socks or shoes or or how do you run your foot pedal in your studio or sewing room? Whatever you want to call it. How do you run that foot pedal? So for those who do not know, my machine does have dual feed. So while I am doing all of this speed sewing, I am not having to stress very much about my fabric shifting in the middle of this because my machine is taking care of that. So my machine is doing the work for me and I am feeding them in. Like I'm not, I'm not stretching or pulling. I am laying everything flat and laying the fabrics flat on top of each other and then letting the machine do the work for me. If you have ever done garment sewing, that is one of the first things that I was taught as a child was your machine knows what it's going to do. Your machine is always going to sew as long as all you do is let it sew. You don't carry the, you don't worry about the fabric on the back. Let's see. Uh, Leanna says, hi, I just got off my live and sent everyone over to your live. <gasps> you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. That's, that's the extent of my set, my singing. <laughs> For, we were having a conversation earlier about singing and being able to carry a tune, which I cannot. Uh, so, yeah, that is the extent of my singing, you guys. Uh, Laura says, I want to finish the binding on a baby quilt for my great niece. She is due the first week of April. I typically sew in socks or slippers. Yeah, I, I have sewn in socks. I have started to, I've tried to sew in socks, and I can do it. But it is definitely not my most comfortable. I prefer to be barefoot. If my feet can handle the cold, then then I am barefoot. Andrea says, if I am on a machine with a pedal, I am barefoot. If I'm on a machine with a push button control, I use it. And footwear is optional. <laughs> well, I will say this. This machine does have the, the push button. So I can, like, start the machine. There's a little green button here. So I can start the machine and run it without doing anything to it however it is it could go a lot faster than I could keep up with so like I can sew fast with the foot pedal but if I think if I try to sew fast without the foot pedal and just letting the machine take the take the wheel you know like Jesus take the wheel kind of deal I think I'd struggle And we are going to make this simple today. I am not pressing these seams open. All of these seams are going to be pressed in one direction. And then my next strip set, we will press it all the opposite direction. My feet are always cold. I believe it. I believe it. I, I can totally understand. Camera over here today, you guys. So I'm just going to leave you guys up there. Actually, I will pull the machine off. So you guys can see a little bit more. Um, so this is the camera that angles down to the machine. I've got to work on my setup and I will work on that more as, you know, once I move. So I am going to pull my fabrics just a little bit just because I don't have a lot of room to work with. Um, I have put a lot of stuff on my ironing board today. It is just one of those kinds of days. Um, I, I went to my local office supply store here, and I was getting things printed out for my husband. And the lady that works the print area is kind of becoming a friend for us. And so she looked at us and asked us what we were doing. And so we were talking about the project that we were working on. And she, I said, well, how's your day going? And she said, oh, <laughs> uh, she had been yelled at and fussed at by a couple of different people during the day. And so she was kind of, she was having a rough day. And I can understand and sympathize with that. And 
So we wished her a Monday versus a Friday. <laughs> we were hoping she would have a better day having a Monday kind of day versus having a Friday kind of day. Because her Friday day was not working out very well for her yesterday. And I felt so bad. There's only so much we could do. Because, I mean, there's nothing like we couldn't plan for her having a rough day. But she had a good attitude about it. She was a real sweetheart. Um, and she, she's been she's been awesome every time we've gone in. So we, uh, we try to make sure and check in on her every time we see her. Let's see. More stop and start control with the feet. But when my knees were messed up. Oh, yes, yes. If your knees are hurting, that press button is a lifesaver. Lifesaver. Oh, you know what? <laughs> if you are looking at getting a machine to carry to classes, always look for a machine, if you can, that has a start-stop. And I will tell you why. <laughs> I was new to sew, new to selling sewing machines, and the company that I worked for, uh, it was Bernina, um, and at the time they offered all the Bernina dealers that were, you know, their corporate dealers, they offered us the option to take machines home. Basically, you could check out a sewing machine, and so I checked out a sewing machine. What I didn't realize is that I checked out a machine without a start-stop button. Uh, you had to use the foot control. Uh, the only time that, the, that you didn't have to use the foot control to start the machine was when you were doing embroidery. And there were, button, there were options on the machine screen. And of all the things I did not do, I did not grab the foot control. So I was home. For an entire weekend, because it was a long weekend, um, and I was home with a machine that I could not use <laughs> because I did not have the foot control, and I had left it at the store. So I always recommended when people were coming into my store to come buy a machine. If you were going to be carrying this to classes, if you were going to be carrying this to retreats, if you have never forgotten a foot control, you will want the start stop button in case you do. Jean kept in stitches. Hello and good afternoon, Tammy and all in chat. Welcome, Jean. I am glad you are here. I am very, very glad you are here. All right, so I'm going to bring you guys over. We are going to go back to the cutting table and I'm gonna grab a sip of my drink. It is another Dr. Pepper, you guys. You know I should buy stock. All right, so because I am not super concerned, because again, this is a baby quilt. Yes, it will be an heirloom because that's the way the mother treats these. And I already know that, but I am not concerned. So my outside strips do wobble a little bit. If I really wanted to go back and fix it, I could. Am I going to? No, I'm not. I'm not going to worry about it. If you want to, you can, um, you could actually take and press all of these as you go. I'm not going to worry about it. It is not big news for me. Okay. So we are going to do 12 blocks. So out of this strip set, we are going to go ahead and cut. And we're going to cut off our selvages first. That is incredibly wobbly right there. Maybe I should start in the middle. Well, you know what? All right, you guys, you're seeing what actually happens in my sewing room. We are going to start at the other end. We are just going to sacrifice. Yes, we are just going to sacrifice. All right. So we are going to line this up kind of on one of these lines and just make sure that it is as level as we want it to be or as level as we are concerned it will be. If you want to be super accurate, you can be. I am not concerned with that on this quote. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off all of these selvages. And if you do not know yet about me, I will save everything that is bigger than an inch. So one, two, and three. Those will all get saved for my personal stash if I don't end up needing them in the quilt. Okay. So we are going to put that to the side. I do have a one-inch quilt in mind 
that will be my next project after Super Secret is done. Uh, but that one inch quilt will have to wait a little bit. All right, so what we are going for is we are going for 12 one and three quarters inch strip sets cut from here. So that is one. And just double check your measurements as you go. I am using the lines on my mat to line all of this up. So I am perfectly happy with that for now. If this was a client quilt where somebody was paying me, I might do it a little differently. All right, so we're going to cut all of these. So, all right, so we talked earlier about, you know, do you sew barefoot or do you sew with shoes or socks or whatever? So I guess the next question is, how often do you change your needle in your machine? Do you change your needle with every project like the manufacturers recommend? Do you change your needle when you start skipping stitches or you have a problem? Do you start changing your needle every so many days of sewing? Like, How do you decide when you are going to change your needle? I know I change mine more frequently than every project because I am usually working on three projects at a time. So if I change mine every project, I would be constantly back and forth changing needles. All right, I'm going to layer these so that I can count without having to count, if that makes sense. So I've got four strips cut. So we are going to go on down and cut the next one. And in case you do not, in case you are wondering about this ruler, if you have not seen this before, this is a quilter slide lock ruler. You can go over to So Be It Quilts. I do not have a link in the chat. I do apologize. Um, but you can go over to So Be It Quilts. It's, um, if you catch the YouTube channel, So Be It Quilts, they have a store and they do make and sell these. So the ruler has a, a wooden handle to it, and when you press down, on, if you, I don't press down on the ruler, the ruler slides. As soon as I press down, the ruler will not slide. I'll actually move the camera and shake it before I actually get it to move. All right, so Jean says every project, depending on the size of the project, awesome. Pastry Queen, Le Leanna says about once to twice a week. Oh, wow. You change your needle a lot faster than I do. I guess I'm behind on the bandwagon on that. I definitely have not gotten my needles changed out that frequently. Let's see. All right. Um, and what size needles do you use? Do you use an 80? Do you use a 70? Do you use a 90? What kind of needles do you use? Or like what size needles do you use? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we need six more. So if I was making the smaller side, or the if I was doing the 13 strips across, so if I was doing the full seven that I was originally going to do, that would have been enough. However, we are going to do double the blocks because I have taken out two fabrics. So we are going to go over here. And go ahead and get this cut. And what I will probably do is we will go ahead and get the second strip set done and see where we're at. See how we're doing things. All right, one, two, three, four, or three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I got four more to cut. And so you, if you can tell, I am going to have quite a bit of extra, and that is perfectly fine. All right, it's Kennedy says, when I break one or when I remember. Okay, we might have to work on that a little bit. <laughs> when you break one, it might be kind of too late. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, let's see, 7511 Microtex. A 7511 for piecing and 9011 for quilting, okay. And then 9014, or yeah, 9014, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, 
I use a 90 usually if I'm quilting with my domestic. If I'm quilting on the long arm, I have not settled on what what needles I want to be using. I know that we're supposed to match it to the thread, uh, the weight of the thread. And I did that with this last project. And I definitely had a better experience in my previous quilting projects. But I'm still, I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm still learning. We've got a lot to go. Right, that's one. We've got three more to go. All right. So we are going to see where I'm at with this. All right. That's two. And I definitely have some give in these, so we may end up with a little bit of the snafu. We're going to see. We're going to see how I play out. How this plays out. We will see if I screwed it up, and if I did, I do have enough room to go back and fix it. That is the one good thing about quilting, is it is just fabric. It can be usually fixed. There, there's, there's usually some way to fix it. All right, so I think this is the last one, and we will double count just to make sure. Because, you know, I am not counting today. <laughs> I'm barely mathing today. Not counting today. Not worth anything. Yeah, my 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 rotary cutters, my, my blades kind of dead. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. So we do have all of these strips. My twin is repeating what I say in the background my twin do i have to i'm lost am i good <laughs> okay y'all gotta let me know <laughs> okay let me know if i've got a technical problem or if i've got an echo let me know are you talking about you know i'm, I'm working here and then this this twin right here. <laughs> so let me know. All right. So we have this strip. So we do have quite a bit of extra. So we will have room to unsew and rearrange strips if we need to. All right. So that strip set is done. So I'm going to lay one of these out so I can double check to make sure that what I've got going below is going to work. And when you do this and you've got these cut this way, you can, if you did not press well, which I didn't, um, you can go back and fix that. So I did press it, I just didn't press it well. Oh, I'm good now? Okay. I wonder how that happened. It's really kind of weird. It's very, very weird. So we are going to lay these out and make sure that they are in the correct order. That way we can tell for sure. And I will show you how you can tell again to make sure that you have everything lined up for your second row. Because we are going to do... We're going to do four extra rows, so I will show you how you can tell. All right, so the fabric that is not being used in this strip set row is this batik on the outside, and that is exactly what we need, okay? So that batik is not going to be used a whole lot, and that's perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this strip set and put it in the middle here. It's just my volume going from soft to louder. Gotcha. Yeah, I will, I will work on that. Um, let's see. I don't have room to pull it right now, but I will work on it. I think I just saw birds fly to my balcony, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we've got this print is right here. And same on that side. This print is here. This print is here, 
this print is here and this print is there. So you are intending to repeat. Okay. So we did 12 of these strips. We will need 24 of these. So I may take extra from this when we get done, or I could go back and cut more strips and make it if I need to, because this only cut 12 and then I've got some extra, it would not be enough to cut 24 out of just this strip set. But that is what we are going to do, is we're going to piece these and then we are going to be cutting 24 of these out because you want this strip set to be here underneath this piece and here above this piece, okay? So we are going to do our pairs like we did last time where we just pair up these outer fabric pieces and they are going to get sewn together and then we will come back and put that in the center, okay? All right, so let's take this back over to the machine. No problem, really, once you, once you realize what it is. Oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah, my microphone is right here and it is not, um, it is not good at picking up over there. So I do have to work on doing some rearranging, but it may be May or the end of May or beginning of June before I can get it all adjusted. Jean says, that is beautiful fabric. Thank you very much. So my niece picked out some of the fabrics and then I just picked out other fabrics to go with it. So that is really all it is, is just picking out fabrics that I thought looked good together and kind of carry the color theme. <sighs> so yeah, you guys, if you do have problems hearing me, just let me know. Um, I, I definitely, I know I've got some work to do on the audio quality, especially over at the cutting table. So I do need to work on that. The other options that I have kind of like died on me. <laughs> I did have another microphone and it was a lapel microphone and it, it would still work, but it only works for maybe two hours. At, at three, it definitely dies. And I think with as exhausted as I am today, we are going to get this strip set done, and I'm going to show you the basic cutting. And then we are going to pick this up again tomorrow, and we will make this more of a day. Um, so I am going to go live at 10 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow. And that is 12 Eastern. So if you not, if you want to catch it tomorrow, you'll be able to catch the rest of it tomorrow. I'm not going to do a lot in advance. I'm not going to do a lot of prep work or anything. I may just do a little bit more math, so I know how many strips I've got to cut and and all of that. Because I want you to be able to repeat what I'm doing and getting, being successful at it. That is very important to me, that you can repeat what I'm doing if that's what you want to do. Uh, my original plan for this quilt was that it was going to be a log cabin. I thought it was me, I'm getting old, I'm getting a lot of crackling, okay. All right, yeah, I will work on that uh, between now and tomorrow and see, I don't know, is it, can you guys tell me if it's when I run the machine that you're getting a lot or when I'm over at the cutting that you're getting a lot of crackling or the background noise? Um, I do have the arms on my chair do move. So they those do move. So that could be some of it and I don't know. I will, I will probably replay my whole video so I can catch and see what you guys are hearing. Because I don't want anybody to not be able to hear what I'm working on or hear what I'm doing. I'll have to catch a replay for tomorrow as I won't be able to make it. Sorry. Ah, that's okay. 
replay is better than no play. And because I'm not giving out all the secrets to this quilt, uh, it will be it will be very it will be very fun to catch the replay. When you are over the cutting table, it doesn't pick up the sound correctly. Gotcha. I will see what I can do. I will find a way. <laughs> we will conquer this. <laughs> definitely need to work on that. I also have background noise. Uh, my husband came home, so he is in the kitchen and working on things himself. So it may be picking up background noise from that as well. That could be part of it. He did come home while I was over, to, over at the cutting table. So yeah, the majority of this quilt, the majority of it, is literally just getting these strips sewn together. And I'm not going to pre-piece everything, so you guys are going to get to see from start to finish, you know, exactly how this is coming together. I mean, when I started today, I was going to be doing seven fabrics. And then I've changed that I'm only doing five. That's okay, Leanna. I appreciate you being here. I will uh, I will definitely you know, have this up for replay. There won't be much longer for this one. Because I think we are going to stop it at, at two hours today. Just so that I can get some rest. <laughs> but I do want to get this quilt done this weekend. So... Yeah, it will get done this weekend and it will get done on live and I will have more I will have more time and energy tomorrow. So there will be the replay. So ugh. Yeah, so I am not worried about lining up the salvages exactly. I'm just doing kind of a, a rough lineup because you saw earlier that I had quite a bit of cutoffs on one end and not a lot on the other end. And that is going to happen. I think one thing I will do is I will take the other strip set and go ahead and press it better and see if I need to make adjustments to how I'm showing you how I'm putting this together so that you don't run into the same problems that I did with it not lining up exactly. I have got to also figure out my St. Patty's Day shirt for tomorrow because this is my St. Patty's Day shirt for today. Now we've got to have shenanigans. It is a quilting room. <laughs> All right, so we, we did the foot. And whether you sew barefoot or not, we did what, what needle you do and what when you change it. Let's see. Do you always sew with cotton thread when you are piecing? Or do you sew with whatever thread's available? Do you sew with polyester for piecing and for quilting? Do you sew with polyester at all on any quilting project? Like, do you sew polyester on your small round quilting or your machine quilting? And what kind of thread do you use? I am personally using cotton for all my piecing, but on my quilting, I am using a polyester. Because I, well, if I quilt on, if I quilt on Beauty, I am using a cotton. If I'm quilting on the Beast, she likes polyester. She likes her polyester thread. Makes me think of those polyester suits from up in the 70s. The itchy, the itchy suits, the leisure suits. I think the leisure suits were itchy. I don't know. <laughs> Now, 
Now this is a quilt that you can upsize a couple of different ways. So if you want to make this into a, a twin or a full or a queen or a king, you can. You just either change the number of fabrics you're using or you change the number of or the size of the blocks. So you can definitely change that. I only use cotton for piecing and use orifil and use orifil and use several for the long arm and use a multitude of threads for my handwork and embroidery. Okay. That's fair enough. I have not actually gotten to pick up any orifil lately. Everything I've got that I have access to easily is Guterman or I'm, I'm really not fond of the Soology threads. So I have not been really didn't like how linty they were, so I don't use those. Uh, but I have not... I use Isocord for my embroidery, my machine embroidery. I don't do hand embroidery. I do not have the hand strength to do it. I'm, that's part of the reason I bought that, uh, that ruler from Fallon and Matt over at So Be It Quilts. It is a lot easier on my hands. All right, so this is the strip that we are putting in the center, the one with all the dark blues in it. And so it is not going to sew directly to another dark blue, okay? So it is gonna to sew to this fabric right here. So we are going to do that two times over is we are going to make sure that those two fabrics, the the pattern fabric here and the its twin, we are going to keep those together. We're not going to sew them just yet. We are going to sew our other pairs just like we did the last time. And I know that my lighter pink is going. You're fine, Joyce. You are good. I'm actually going to be taking a nap here shortly. <laughs> um, so we know that this lighter pink is gonna to go to the outside. So we'll have this other one to the inside. So that's what we are going to grab as it tries to fall off my lap. And yes, I do work in my lap quite a bit. Joyce is saying hi to me and everyone. I am glad you are here. Thank you for joining. We are not gonna be live much longer. We are gonna run till two hours. And we're going to call it quits for the day because I am beyond exhausted. I'm not mathing very well. <laughs> so we are going to call it then. But I will be back again tomorrow. And I am going to start that live at the same time I started this live today. So that is 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, so I'm not going to tomorrow. I'm not going to restate everything that I did today. Uh, but we will continue. We're not. I'm not going to jump ahead or or leave you guys hanging. So you guys will get to see everything. You'll watch the replay. I understand, Joyce. And I am going to have a list of questions for everybody tomorrow because uh, I definitely want to get some input and see what you guys think. Um, so I do have couple of things that I, I know for a fact I want to ask and see what people say. <laughs> oh, please take a nap for me. I so need sleep very, very badly. Yeah, I, so I have, um, I have fibromyalgia. That is one of my, my medical issues. Another is psoriatic arthritis. And I have had fibromyalgia as a diagnosis for over 10 years and my psoriatic arthritis diagnosis is a lot more recent and I am on my second medication um, with trying different medications for psoriatic arthritis everybody's body metabolizes medications differently and my body did not particularly like my first medication so I'm on a different one and it is an infusion medication. And so I I get it every eight weeks. And at six weeks, I was warned by everybody else who takes the same medication 
I was warned that you would start feeling everything. Like you're, you would be back exactly where you were before you started taking the medication. And then you get your infusion and you'll be back to feeling a lot better. I am waiting yeah, over 40 years. Oh, goodness. Bless your heart. I, yeah, I can sympathize. I, I very much can. Um, but yeah, so the last two weeks before your infusion, um, they, they warned me that it was going to be my worst, and it, it truly is. Um, I have quite a few others, too. These are just the two main ones that I deal with that the public sees a lot more of, like, my accommodations that I do to accommodate just challenge, being, being challenged by my body. Um, but, yeah, so I get my infusion this upcoming Tuesday. So after Tuesday and after the infusion starts kicking in, I will feel so much better. I will be back to normal, you guys. <laughs> but this is my low energy. This is my low power. This is, um, I'm, I'm still managing to quilt and sew, and I'm still managing to get things done. It is just a lot slower pace. It is a lot more calmer pace because I can't, I, I just, I can't. So I, I do what I can when I can, and I am thankful that I'm able to do what I can when I can. Oh, here's something. So I know you guys can't see all the way to my needle necessarily. I don't, or I don't know how well you can see because of the light. Um, so my strip sets do not, all, not all of my strips are the same length. I did not cut them down. I did not cut selvages off. You know, I didn't do anything to them other than just cutting them off. So when you get done sewing one strip set and you have a strip that is hanging out an extended length, and you are ready to put that next strip in, you can do one of two things. You can sew off the side, like sew into the seam allowance area, and then line up your next strip. Or you can do what I do. It doesn't cost a whole lot of extra thread, but I just go ahead and continue sewing. That way I maintain my quarter inch. I don't you know, lose track of where I'm at. Everything just fits well and flows smoothly. So at the end of my strips, when I am chain piecing like this, because I've pieced the other strip set, now I'm piecing this one. When I, you're piecing strip sets like this, I just find it easier to go ahead and maintain your quarter of an inch because then you're not, your brain isn't having to think through extra steps it's not having to contemplate. You didn't accidentally sew off of something when you didn't need to. You are just maintaining that quarter of an inch. And that is that is what I go for. It's just maintaining that quarter of an inch. That extra little bit of thread, it can easily be snipped out of the, the fabric if you decide to use that extra little piece of a fabric. It's not that hard to, to just take a seam ripper and pull it out. That is exactly what I do, Tammy. Yes. And, I mean, it is it is solely because it is a low-power option for me. So I don't have to think. All right. So if you guys can see where my finger is holding, that is the very end of my bottom strip set. So I know it's hard to see with the light. And I can't do anything about that easily without going into all my settings. So... Where my finger is, is where the end of that strip set is, so I have all this extra. I'm not going to do it now because this is the end. I'm done with this strip after I sew to this, or to my finger. So I will cut there. If I was sewing another strip set on to this, what I would do is I would stop. Or I would continue, sorry, I would continue on down to the bottom. Um, and you know what? Yes, I will. <laughs> you guys get to see it. Because I've got to attach that center piece anyway. And I do have a cutter on the side of my machine. Um, so I didn't have to pull my, my thread cutter out, but it's just easier for me. It just makes sense in my brain. 
All right. So the strip that I am working, the small, the shortest strip that I've got is kind of determining that I've got so much extra. All right. But I know where my strip set is going to fall and I'm okay with having the extra. So I'm going to go ahead and sew off the extra end of that because it is longer. And then I'm just going to sew back onto the next one. Okay. Andrea says I have psoriatic arthritis and osteoarthritis. Oh gosh. I have trouble going in public because of the psoriasis. Yeah, I currently do not have a flare up of the psoriasis. Um, and it actually caused me problems with my diagnosis. Um, and that is one of the challenges with going with with medica medical practices these days it, and finding the right physician for you. Um, I had a doctor that basically he didn't disagree that I have psoriatic arthritis, but he wouldn't confirm the diagnosis because I did not have active psoriasis, even though I've had it in the past and I've been diagnosed with it since I was a child. Um, so because he did not witness it and somebody else knew within the last two years did not diagnose psori psoriasis, he didn't want to believe that I have psoriatic arthritis and gave me a little bit of grief. But I'm not going to let that bother me. He is no longer my doctor. Um, but... Yeah, there's, I, I thankfully have not had active psoriasis. My, my psoriatic arthritis has stopped attacking my skin for the moment, knock on wood, and it is just attacking my joints. Um, the challenge with that psoriatic arthritis, for those who don't know about psoriatic arthritis, um, it is different uh, from rheumatoid arthritis and the majority of osteoarthritis, from my understanding, I'm more than happy to be corrected. Um, I have both also Andrea and severely severe osteoporosis and severe nerve damage. Yeah, gotta love getting older and falling apart. <laughs> We're all doing it, each at our own pace. <laughs> um, so... Psoriatic arthritis, unlike the other uh, arthritis forms, one of its hallmark symptoms, it can be one-sided. It could be, you know, you don't have to have, it doesn't have to match on both sides. So like if your hip on one side is hurting, but your hip on the other side isn't hurting, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's psoriatic arthritis. Um, but that is common with psoriatic arthritis is it doesn't have to be one-sided. But the dip joints, they're called dip joints, these top little joints, the last little joint in your finger, same thing in your toe, these distal joints, those swell. Um, that is the most common way that psoriatic arthritis can will be from my understanding, that is the most common way that it gets diagnosed, is those joints swelling. Um, Jean says mine, unfortunately, for the most part, started at the age of 18, so not old age. I understand. Yeah, I mean, well, well you're getting old. You're just not getting old at the same pace as everyone else. <laughs> I know growing up, arthritis of any form was always considered an old person's problem, and... I'm quickly approaching that. <laughs> yeah, um, people who don't go through it can't understand. I came in late. What are what am I working on? I am working on a baby quilt, and it is inspired by an Irish chain. It is not completely an Irish chain, so I am not disclosing the full pattern until it is completely done. Um, I am working with five fabrics. I did start with seven, but I've eliminated two because they just didn't, didn't fit the way I wanted them to. So I will have a little bit of math to do later to make the adjustments. Um, if I hadn't mentioned it, um, you went back, you went out and back in. Sounds perfect now. Okay. 
if you hadn't mentioned it, I don't normally even tell anyone. Just too much to go into to try and explain, plus all the other. Yes, absolutely. And that's usually why I don't even bring it up. Um, I just let people know that, yes, I have disabilities, and they are severe enough that I, I am disabled. There's not a, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's not, you know, I wish I could work, yes, but I know I can't. I know I've tried. I know I would fail. It's not a, you know, confidence thing. It is a physical disability thing. Uh, so I do know I have those challenges. Um, and so it kind of comes with the territory. I mean, everybody, you know, can work within their own different ranges. And I, I, I hit all of this. Um, so, okay, so this baby quilt, I'm going to, I'm only going to run for another few minutes. I'm not going to run a whole lot longer. I was thinking I might go for three hours today. I'm not going to make it. I just, I can't. I need some rest. I need some sleep. Uh, but I will be okay tomorrow. I do not have any other obligations. Uh, so my live is my only obligation tomorrow. Uh, so I will be working on this tomorrow. You have it on the back of your neck, and it looks like you have giant dander flakes. Yeah. I'm diagnosed, but I've not found a med that works. So um, a lot of the meds that they would prescribe for psoriatic arthritis will work for psoriasis. Um, it just depends on which one your body responds to. And there are a lot of people that do struggle to find one that your body responds to. Um, I am lucky that I am on my second and my body is working with it. But just these two weeks before an infusion are just awful. It is like I have been unmedicated for six months. And that is as as it is just as rough as it sounds. Um, all right. So this is our second strip set. I'm not gonna worry about pressing it just yet. But that is a second strip set. So let me take it over to the cutting table. And I know you guys are struggling to hear me over there. We are going to see if we can fix that. So let me see. I'm going to see if I can do this without disconnecting you guys, okay? So you'll have to bear with me. Ugh. Okay, this thing is heavy too. Okay. Yep, I don't have enough room. So we're going to see if that's a little bit better. And let's make sure. Okay, I think that's as loud as it can go. My infusion is every week. I wish my medication would let me go every week, but it's just the way this medication dosing schedule is set. All right, so I've got a little bit. Okay, my light's evening out. Okay. All right, so this is strip set number two. And this is the one, this is the first one that we'll need 24 of. All the other strip sets that we are going to do for the main part of the quilt are also going to be 24 set strip sets. So you're going to need to be able to cut 24 one and three quarters inch strips from your sets. So we have 12 of our center pieces. And we are going to, if there's not enough strip, if I'm, and I'm, I bet you there's not, if there's not enough length in this second strip set to cut 24, I will do a second strip set so that we can cut 24. So I think the only thing I will do off camera uh, between now and tomorrow morning is I will get this strip set pressed. And so this strip set was pressed to this, this side, which is my right. This strip set will be pressed the opposite way. So it will go to the left. And we're just gonna continue that because, so this strip set, you're going to be putting on top in on bottom of this. So pressing it to the left will mean that it matches up both on the top and on the bottom. So these seams will nest nicely. So I may also repress these open just a little, or press these down just a little bit because I do have some discrepancies in my pressing. And that is just because I am tired and I did not put forth the effort that I should. Okay, so that is on me. That is not on the fabric. It is on me. Okay, so I've got my 12 center strip sets. And then I've got my one strip set for my second set done. And so I may press this. I may go ahead and cut. I don't know. We'll see. 
But when you come back tomorrow, or when I come back tomorrow, we will start on the rest. I may go ahead and also cut the rest of my fabrics. All of them are going to be cut at the one and three quarters inch. Even my sashing, everything for this quilt, for the center, the only thing we're not cutting at one and three quarters inch is going to be our sashing and of course our backing um, and binding. Binding will not be cut at one, one and three quarters. Uh, it did not help. It just doesn't pick up your voice at that distance correctly. Okay. I'm glad you let me know. Thank you. I will, what fabric that is. Uh, which one? Because I've got five different fabrics here. So in, <coughs> in the strip sets, there is this fabric right here. And it is, it is very modeled. It's, uh, it came from Joanne Fabrics. Uh, I do not know if there is a name. It says Trademarks of the Singer Company, I believe. Um, then this fabric with the uh, corals yes these are all from different collections they are not from the same collection uh, this is a hobby lobby fabric this fabric that you are seeing with the blue in it that is also a hobby lobby fabric and this pink fabric on this outside edge is a different fabric as well it came I bought it at a flea market. It does have selvage information on it, so I can look that up for tomorrow. So I can discuss where all these fabrics actually came from and what information I have about them. And then this batik uh, was purchased at my local quilt shop. So they, they were all purchased in different locations, um, aside from the Hobby Lobby fabrics. I have one Joann's fabric in here, uh, two Hobby Lobby fabrics, one flea market, and one um, quilt shop fabric. So they are they are definitely all from different collections. So I will see what I can do about the mic as well for tomorrow. So I'm not going to keep you guys too much longer. I am going to go ahead and get off of here and go get some rest and get back to this and get it pressed. Um, again, like I said, I might cut the strip sets just off of this so I know how much more I need to go. And I will be back uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. If you cannot catch my live tomorrow, I understand. Uh, there is always the replay and replay is always better than no play. If you have not hit the like button, please hit the like. If you are not able to chat, it is because you have not subscribed. So please hit the subscribe button. I would be more than happy to have you in the chat tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow morning. You guys have a great evening and I will see you tomorrow.